Greetings, Internet Drinking Buddies. My name is Link. The show's name is Tubbin and Chuggin. And on this episode, I'll be imbibing Benedictine. Welcome back to the tub, everybody. Dry January is over for those of us that were observing it. Uh, and as a result, I had a little bit of BevMo money to spend from the holidays. And naturally, I've been to many a BevMo, many a Total Wine, and you know I've tried many different alcohols. We're, we're nearing 100 episodes here, and so it, it's somewhat difficult for me to find like newer, spicier products that I haven't tried. What I like to do in this case is I go to the cordials section there. They have all these different, you know, historical ones or new sort of influencer type uh, beverages. So we found this one. I was looking like, what is this Benedictine thing? And it has its own Wikipedia page. And history apparently going back to 1510, although that might be a lie. So let, let, let's go ahead and take a closer look at it. This Benedictine sort of mythos, if you will, begins back in 1863 when a man named Alexandre Legrand, if my French is anywhere close to accurate on that one, you know, he discovered this sort of old recipe from a religious sort of foundation on his maternal side of the family, got together with a local chemist, came together with these 27 herbs and spices to this day, only like three people at a time know what they are, um, and began to market this sort of alcoholic beverage that he had. Uh, but to sort of spice up the marketing, he played upon old sort of monastery things. We've had a few different monastery recipes on this show, and this one goes, he alleges, to 1510 in the Benedictine Abbey, where it gets its name. That's in the northern part of France, Normandy area. So using that and sort of furthering the marketing on that, he, he gets the D-O-M stamp on here, which stands for Deo Optima Maxima, which is to God, who is great, who is good. I think that's the exact Latin, I'll put the, the phrase here. Um, but essentially just sort of what that order of monks would stamp their documents with. So he puts the stamp on here. The bottle shape is sort of unique. You know, it's got this sort of round, or the, the sharp edges here at the side. It's got the big, you know, wax stamp on it. It looks very nice. It hasn't changed in the entire time uh, that they've been marketing it. So it's got this whole story to play up with it. And, you know, I find that pretty fun. That's the history. What What is actually in this beverage that we should be excited about? Well, it comes in at 40% alcohol by volume. So it's not like the crazier chartreuse percentages or even absinthe percentages that we might have expected. Just that solid 40%. And it comes, obviously, only in fifth. They've been, as I said, using this bottle for a long time. I was able to pick this up for $38 for this bottle, which is bordering on $3 a drink. I'll put the exact price up here. So it's definitely not cheap. Um, but, you know, long history to it. Let's see, let's see what it's all about. Obviously, with a product with this much sort of history to it, there are many different ways that you can drink it straight, which is obviously what we'll be doing. Some people like to add hot water to it. There's a sort of a weird French cocktail name for it that I'll put on here. There's like a brandy version of it as well, but we're just going to keep it nice and simple. Sip it straight. See how we like it. Okay, so the cap confused me, but I figured it out. It's got kind of a... Uh... I don't know, like a brandyish, brownish kind of look to it. You know, it's not like absurdly green or maybe a little orangey to it, but um, yeah, cheers. Very like um, sort of Grand Marnier-ish orange liqueur kind of vibes to it, but like syrupy, almost like a, a molassesy type of thickness to the syrupness to it. It's good. It's very good. Yeah, the thickness of the, the drink is what gets you at first because I'm not really expecting it, just from the look of it, to be, like, rich. Um, and then the orange kind of comes in at the end. Incredibly smooth finish to it, though. I know I just cough, so it doesn't really seem like it, but that was from a different thing. Still got, obviously, a kick of alcohol, too. I'm not gonna... I've long since stopped pr pretending that, like, if I can't taste the alcohol, you can't. If you taste the alcohol and things, you're probably gonna taste it in this. It's very, like... I don't know. Thick is the word I keep coming back to, because it just... It feels like a syrup that then tastes like orange at the end, and it's very smooth the entire time. It's just sort of... You're not expecting it to be that thick. 
very pleasant just little orange aftertaste that lingers almost in the front of your mouth not even on like the tip of your tongue very pleasant overall experience these herbs and spices i don't know if i could begin to guess them there's probably some form of cinnamon in there but again obviously the recipe is not known to only three people at a time for top secret reasons but um this is very good this is definitely i think a like conversational alcohol piece pairing wise i don't really know like maybe this is like a probably best served as like an after dinner kind of thing you know you break out the brandy maybe you try this and you're like oh this orange brandy you know from france and the benedictine monks and all of that and i don't know what voice i'm doing now but it's fun it's fun to have overall probably like this is one you might want to put in a decanter just show it off a little bit have a you know nice centerpiece to it it's expensive but like brand like when you compare it to brandies it's really not that bad overall it's just very nice very ex like on the high end of middle class drinks is what i would call this very fun uh if you have different alcohols you'd like to see me review always let me know i'll try to get to those um and please drink responsibly